Isopril was 2183 for 10 5 milliliter vials. Um, it's now $17,901. Um, that's, that's in about a year and a half time. Why would you not recommend to the board that, you know, over a 30% increase for one year? I would think that's, that's a pretty good return rate. Um, why don't you charge 3000 for that? Look, it's something we'll discuss tomorrow. You will discuss dropping the price of isopril to 3000 because that's over a 30% um, increase in the original price. So we will absolutely discuss it. Okay. Uh, Nitropress went from 214 to $880 for one two milliliter vial. Um, a 30% increase, again, a, a, a pretty good shot, would be about 300 bucks. Will you talk about that as well? At the for board? sure. Let me ask you this. Um, you have public and private pension funds that invest in you and put their confidence in you. Do you think that this is the kind of business model they want you to pursue. Obviously, they want to have returns so their investors can retire with dignity. Um, do you think they want it to be done on this type of basis? Certainly not. But I, I think it's important. Uh, this is, you know, the pricing actions here are with respect to uh, the drugs we mentioned and this segment of Valiant's business are not all of Valiant's business. And uh, what attracted us to Valiant was not what's called the neuro and other division, but rather the Bausch & Lomb franchise, the company's branded generics portfolio, uh, their uh, Salix acquisition. Uh, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of good drugs made by this company where the prices are competitive and reasonable. Uh, there are a lot of consumer products made by this company where the products are, are high quality products and they're priced at sensible prices. So I think, you know, um, the point made earlier, uh, you know, a, a relatively small percentage of Valiant's business, call it 10, 15% of the revenues of the company, have taken down the company. 